How can we turn our customers into our fans? How can we inspire others? This is what we are going to find out this day as well as if it's true that between laughing and crying there's just one thing, the big deep ocean of boredom. And I will tell you quite important things like why David Beckham should not talk while having sex. <laughs> I know this is a question you have asked yourself for many, many years. Today you will get the answer why David Beckham should not talk while having sex. <laughs> From customers to fans, my students usually ask me, Paul, what's the difference between customers and fans? So I tell them, customers must be attracted, fans come voluntarily. Customers give their money, fans give their heart. Customers are critics, fans are advertising vehicles. Customers complain and fans forgive. Why do I say that? Because I was asked and because it's true. Customers must be attracted, fans come voluntarily. If that wouldn't be so, Robbie Williams would be the loneliest person on the planet at his concerts. But, as you know, many people travel far to see him, spend a lot of money on tickets for him, stand a long time in the queue in front of the portable toilets, yeah? pay a shameful amount for a pint of beer, but they come voluntarily. Listen, guys, if one of your customers is tattooing your company logo yeah, on his arm or some other part of his anatomy, give me a call. You will be my hero. Well done. And <laughs> Inspiration is expectation plus X. Find out what's the expectation of your customers. If you're not sure, ask them. And finally, generate many, many X factors, many, many extra degrees. To the ladies, you have to be extremely strong right now. But when I buy a new pair of jeans and I don't know how to wash them, and I find that label inside, <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? I am inspired <laughs> to retain in the memory. And this is what we have to gain when we want to turn our customers into our fans, retaining in their memories. To retain in the memory, we have exactly two opportunities to make them laugh, to make them cry. And the rest is the big, deep ocean of boredom. No emotional imprint, nothing worth remembering. Almost 18 years ago, at the beginning of my radio career, I was sent to Chicago to study the American radio market. And I met a guy named Man Kamala from WRCX Rock 103.5, Man Cow's Morning Madhouse. And he had a great gift for his listeners, a first-class trip around the world. That fantastic prize was talk of the town in Chicago. From Monday till Thursday, there's just one thing on air, this fabulous world trip. Friday morning, 10 past 7, my alarm clock went off. I turned my radio on and I heard the following story. Man Kamala from WRCX Rock 103.5, Man Cow's Morning Madhouse, encouraged his listeners to call in. A few minutes later, listener Hank is on the phone. Small talk between Man Kamala from WRCX Rock 103.5, Man Cow's Morning Madhouse, and listener Hank, and suddenly Man Cow Mala did something very unusual for an American radio host. He lowered his voice and said to Hank, to the listener, lucky you. You know what's going to happen to you. And Hank replied, well, yeah, I think so. This is the reason because I called. I'm not stupid. Thanks, Man Cow Mala. And Man Cow Mala raised his voice and shouted to Hank, you've won that wonderful world trip. You're going to see the pyramids of Gizeh. You will fly to Australia. We bring you to the Opera House. You will meet and greet Kylie Minogue there. We will bring you to Mauritius, the Maldives, Antarctic. Until now, I didn't actually know that one can holiday in the Antarctic. And to cut the long story short, Mankow said your trip ends flying to South Africa. A helicopter will pick you up in Cape Town, fly you to the top of Table Mountain, and with a sundowner in your hand, with a lovely cocktail, you're going to see the greatest sunset of your life. So far, so good. I would have been thrilled. Hank fell silent. Didn't say a word. And I wondered why. And man, cow, Muller from WRCX, Rock 103.5, man, cow's morning matters, got irritated as well. 
and said to Hank, hey man, what's up? Aren't you happy? And Hank said, yes, but... And Manka said, what? Yes, but... And Hank said, I can't see anything. Manka said, why? And Hank said, because I'm blind. What did Mankow do? After Hank told him, I can't see anything because I'm blind, he instantly said with a warm, soft, soothing voice, so you can feel the world. Oh, I've heard a lot of stories in the past 18 years, and I'm glad that I was allowed to forget most of them. But this is still in my mind. Why? Because it touched me emotionally. I met a lot of people in the past 18 years, and I'm glad that I forgot many of them. Not most of them, many of them. <laughs> but he's still in my mind. Why? Because he touched me emotionally. Nothing moves people more than emotions. You sell yourself with the power of emotions. You sell your products, your services with the help of emotions. Between laughing and crying, there's just one thing, the big, deep ocean of boredom. Vision without action is an illusion. The biggest inspiring factor is you, not your product, not your services. I'm really sorry, but the biggest passion factor, the biggest inspiring factor is every single one of you. And now it's over to you. I wish you many inspired customers. Even more, I wish you a lot of fans. If you like my presentation, I'm Paul Jannis Baumgartner. If not, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thank you very much.